Welcome back everybody. I want to show you some anatomy today of the hamstrings and the calf muscles. So we drew them on for you, which Mike did an excellent job. We're going to start with a biceps femoris or biceps femoris. It originates right here at the ischium, which is your sits bone. So you can really feel it right here on your clients. And a lot of times this causes back pain when the biceps femoris is tight, it pulls down on the back. So you want to find the origin right here at the ischium. It comes down and the short hair of the bicep originates in the linea aspera of the femur and it inserts on the tibial side. And remember the tibial bone does not bear any weight. The second muscle of the hamstrings is the semitendinosus, which will be the pink one. And this one inserts at the pes and serenus which is, means pes and serenus is three muscles are attached right there, is the gracilis sartorius and the semitendinosus with a T. The next one is the semimembranosus and originates also at the ischium and it goes down, inserts again into the tibia. Now for the gastrocnemius, the gastrocnemius originates right here at the femur and it goes down, it kind of splits right here, goes down to the Achilles tendon, all the way to the calcaneal tendon. And the soleus originates right here also, and it goes down the sides, it's underneath the gastrocnemius. Soleus means flat fish. So it looks like a flat fish underneath the gastrocnemius, and this is the pink one, we drew just the edges, and it also inserts at the calcaneal tendon. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you some techniques right here. You usually start with your effleurage to warm up the muscles. You do a few, I like to do three, three sets of each. Three sets of effleurage and a couple of petrissage, warm up the muscles really good. And then you can start with some figure eights. This really gets the biceps femoris here. You can even do one at a time with your knuckles. You can scrape down. You know, this is a really good one to get cross fiber. You can come across also the adductors and the edge of the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus. And for the gastrocnemius, I like to separate it too. Go up, skip the popliteal and continue on. To get to the soleus, you put your thumbs on both sides of the gastrocnemius and just go all the way up. So you're kind of like squeezing, like if you're squeezing a pimple, your thumbs are pushing towards each other. And this really gets the soleus. And to get the circulation towards the heart, I like this one too, really. You get the blood back towards the heart. If you're working with somebody that has diabetes, you want to do it a little bit slower because their veins don't fill up as fast. Somebody with back pain, you want to make sure and get the origin of the biceps femoris and semitendinosus and semimembranosus because when the hamstrings get really tight, they start pulling down and they can put pressure on the low back. So this is really important for people with low back pain that you also check the biceps femoris and, and, and all the hamstrings. While you're here, just go around the trochanter. You know, go cross fiber. Get the hamstrings and the adductors here. The adductors are all inside. Remember one thing guys, what I like to teach is muscles and groups. And so I'm going to give you a tip of how I teach my students that to me, instead of reading 20 muscles all at once and get confused of where they are and what they do and how they function, put them in groups. I always say there's six deep hip rotators, five adductors, four quads, three hamstrings, two lower leg muscles, and one major hip flexor, which is the iliopsoas, which is really two and one, but I like to call it one. Or you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, or six, five, four, three, two, one, whichever one you like better. But remember, six deep hip rotators, five adductors, four quads, three hamstrings, two lower leg muscles, and then one major hip flexors. So let me explain to you a little bit the difference between a strain and a sprain. The strain with a T 
the T has to do with a tendon. So strain, tendon, sprain, ligament. Ligaments attach bone to bone, strains attach the muscle to the bone. So if you have a type one strain, that means that it's not too bad. You can uh, do some work on it, you know, use your RICE acronym, you know, rest, ice, compress and elevate. If it's a type three, that means that the muscle tore completely off the bone and you don't wanna do too much work on that. You might wanna wait 72 hours, especially if it turned purple, that means that there was a really uh, bad tear. So you wanna make sure that they've gone to the doctor and that you've waited long enough for it to, uh, to start, that you're not gonna do any more damage. When they have a type three strain, you definitely do not wanna do any stretching because if the muscles are already torn off from the insertions and you go and do stretches, then that's not good. So make sure you know the difference and that you're being careful. And also you can do these techniques on somebody that has restless leg syndrome. So people with restless leg syndrome, it really helps their muscles relax. People that get charley horses, you know, they get a really bad cramps, usually right here in the gastrocnemius. So you wanna take it one inch strips and really treat the gastrocnemius real gently. You know, find the trigger point and work it out. See how it splits right here naturally? And then you go back because right here, there's nerves and uh, veins and arteries that go through here and you don't wanna do any damage. You never wanna put any pressure here on the popliteal. So you can skip that, go up the gastrocnemius and then just keep going. For bigger people, you can use a forearm. You know, use pressure with your forearm. Watch your body mechanics too. I'm pushing with my legs, so I'm not doing this with my arm. I'm pushing with my legs. Another thing that you can do is raise their leg, pin and stretch. And if they want, if you want them to offer a little bit of resistance, you can do that too. Like push against and then stretch it out. Push again. So this is some of the techniques that you can use and you can be really specific. And I like to work at all, you know, muscles work in groups. So you wanna make sure that you work the biceps femoris, semi-tendinosis, semi-membranosis, gastrocnemius, and the soleus. And you usually start, treat the origin, the belly, the insertion. Origin, belly, and insertion. You can do many strokes here, and I, I like doing this one because this really gets the blood flow back up towards the heart. When you're using pressure, you always wanna to go towards the heart. You can come down a little bit if you're not using pressure, but when you're applying pressure, remember in the limbs, it's always towards the heart. You can do cross fiber, you can do knuckles. Remember the pes and serenus right here where the semi-tendinosis inserts? You also have the attachment of the gracilis and the sartorius. So you wanna make sure and address around the knee give them some circular motion and just work all these tendon attachments. I do a lot of cross fiber and I think that works for me to really get the muscle to relax and keep the pain tolerance level to what the client can tolerate. Don't go too deep. And don't forget to learn your muscles and groups. Remember the one, two, three, four, five, six. One hip flexor, the iliopsoas. Two lower leg, three hamstrings, four quads, five adductors, and six deep hip rotators. Okay, guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications button. Check me out on Instagram for AMP reviews and go to my store if you want any tools or lotions and potions. Until the next time, create a good day. So this is one of the reasons why as massage therapists, what we do is so important. You know, uh, the sensory organ of touch, which is our largest organ actually. The skin triggers so many sensations and it's so important and it's making sense now with this ASMR. So as massage therapists, we're already doing some of this ASMR techniques. And if you've given up 
and do not include nerve ending strokes, then maybe it's time to bring them back and incorporate them.